When I was 12 years old, I was called to the school principal's office. Oh my God, I was so scared because my parents were also called in. I couldn't understand the reason why I was called to the school principal's office. But I remember that day as if it was yesterday. As I sat in that dark set room, the walls seemed to close in on me. The air was heavy with the weight of impending judgment. It turned out that our geography teacher had lodged a complaint. She complained that I was asking a lot of questions. Okay, but in the world I lived, people would ask questions if they don't understand. But our geography teacher insisted that that was disrupting the class. So that you better understand my shock and the misunderstanding that I had. It is as if for a student at the university not allowing to use ChatGPT. For me, the same applied for if I don't understand, why wouldn't I be allowed to ask questions? As I sat there, I watched how angry the school principal was and how confused and concerned my parents were. As was any personal anecdote and motivational pep talk, all stories have a moral. And what was the moral of my story? Ask questions. So, as you see, I didn't learn my lesson. I was encouraged to stop asking and being curious, but instead, I embraced curiosity because I believe curiosity is God-given, inborn, free, free learning mechanism. And every parent or every person who has ever observed three-year-old would confirm my following words. Kids, oh, sorry, kids, they race, they jump, they dance, they love, and they ask a lot of questions. What is this? What is that? Explain to me this. Tell me more about it. And when kids are silent, when kids don't ask questions, when kids are not curious, we ask, is everything okay with you? But somehow, growing older, becoming adult, when we see adult happy, laughing, energetic, curious, and ask questions, we ask an adult, are you okay? And that doesn't really make sense. So uh, the moral of the story, I started investigating and searching, and I was so relieved and happy to discover that it actually had, uh, the education had actually this approach, and it's called inquiry-based learning. As the name suggests, you have to inquire, you have to ask questions. It's all about encouraging students to ask questions, investigate topics, and solve problems. Today, with 16 years of teaching experience under my belt, designing courses, and working with students from all over Uzbekistan, I have come to understand traditional methods to learning, traditional methods to teaching often fail, I'm sorry, and instilling qualities that are essential in bringing up active, curious, and lifelong learning. So, as an educator, I felt challenged. Like, how would I possibly explain my learners that education doesn't end when the course ends? Education doesn't end when you graduate from the university, when you step out. Actually, we are surrounded by education. Inquiry-based learning is another fancy word for curiosity. And actually, before I get down to the part where I explain easy steps that educators, my colleagues, you can also follow, and learners, you can also apply to your learning, let me first off break down what IBL actually stands for and what it entails. It has its roots in the works of leaders in the sphere of education. Lev Vygotsky emphasized the role of active learning and inquiring in the learning process. Also, there's plenty of data and research to support the efficiency of IBL method. In one study carried out by Mursayed, it was found that with the help of IBL activities in the EFL classroom, students could increase their critical thinking abilities. So, we belong to the 
rapidly changing world. And in the world that is changing so rapidly, we really need to bring up lifelong learners who are curious and who ask a lot of questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are not tired and you are well seated because I would like to explain in 42 easy to follow steps how you can also embrace IBL method. And this was the part you were supposed to get scared and I was supposed to say, I'm kidding, because there are, <laughs> there are only two things you actually should do if you also want to implement IBL. So you can see here my students. So while preparing my students for the IELTS International English Language Testing System exam, time and again, I would see the frustration in their faces because they would be stuck at a certain band and they would lose the meaning. Why did they start at all? Why are they doing at all? And I decided that I would challenge them with the help of IBL method. So in the photo, you can see students taking the active participation in discovering the, the reasons why they need a certain band and why they need to uh, pass the test with flying colors. And it worked. So the first method I call is questions, questions, and questions. Get your students, come up with questions, ask them. There is something so beautiful in the sequence of the following questioning. First off, it starts with what? What? Okay, what is that you're after? And it's followed by a question, why? Why have you, why do you have to do that thing? And once you discover your why, you will find a way how. I will repeat again. First, it starts with what? Followed by why. I was actually inspired by a book by a therapist. Yes. And then in the book, Yes, it would say a person who has discovered his why will find a way how. And the same applies to teaching and the same applies to education. If you find out why you're doing it, what, what, what are the purposes you're driven at? If you find your core reasoning behind a certain goal, you will be able to find a way how to do it anyways. So also, when students were struggling with the problems, I tried to do my best at shifting their paradigm and shifting their mindset from the fact, oh my God, I have four mistakes or five mistakes to, oh yes, I have five lessons to learn from. And they were so active in questioning, okay, how can I improve the problem? What can I do next time better? And trust me, the work wonders. And the next thing, next thing, actually, that comes from the personal story. After reading over like 200 books, I started being confused. Where did this information come from? Where that information came from? And etc. And I was like, to retain the most out of the information that I was learning, I was supposed to find that magic key. And the magic key that opens almost all learning and educational doors is relevance. How does particular information relate to you? So when I started reading with the question in my head, how does it relate to me? What can I take from that book and implement in my personal life, in my personal relationship, uh, in my teaching, in my career, and etc.? I started retaining more of the information. You see, we are anyways human creatures and we are somehow selfish and egoistic. We want things to revolve around us. True? I think so. And it also can be applied to education. When we are obtaining certain information, when we ask, how does this information going to help me? We will be learning more out of that information. And that's exactly what I have implemented during my teaching. I was trying to help students to find that magic key or magic button, pressing which they would be able to open the doors and they would be retaining most of the information. There are so many things to be said about curiosity and why we should embrace curiosity. We have to ask questions and etc. But I believe the following words and the quote by a gentleman who we are all too glad to see 
ideally every day, would best encapsulate the essence of my words. Tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I learn. Thank you so much.